I got some pretty amazing news for you. Let's get started right away. Blockade Labs has an amazing new addition. As you know, you can create 360 surrounding sky boxes with their technology with AI. But now what they added is that you can paint inside of the sky box. And this is then taken as an inspiration for the AI to figure out what you want to have. So when you come first to that page, you get here a nice description, also a short tutorial video on showing you how to do that. When you confirm that, you are here in the sky box and down here you have two options, create new and remix. When you click on create new, this again gives you another explanation here. Click on get started and then here on the left side you have a couple of very easy to understand tools. Most importantly you have a brush here and below that you have the brush size and this allows you to paint inside of this sky box. Now that sky box has different forms of wireframe. So you can see here and right now I have a sphere grid. That means when I move around in that you can see that this is a sphere that I'm standing in the middle of. You can also have a square. I find that is a little a little bit easier for drawing rooms because it gives you a bit more orientation and also the sphere can sometimes look like a cylinder so it's a little bit confusing while well, this gives you at least some points of reference. Another cool function here is that you can also show a sky box in the background. This can give you additional help to understand what you're looking at and you can also show a plain grid here. Now a good thing that you also have here is when you press the space bar on your keyboard, this will then put you in the view mode. So when you click and drag your mouse, you can look around up and down in all kinds of directions. Of course you can't move around because this is not really a 3D world. It is a sky box, which is like a 360 photo. Another tool of course you have in here is your eraser. So when you draw something and you don't quite like it, you go here to your eraser eraser tool. You can see it also has shortcuts. Eraser is E, the brush is B. So when you click on that, I can now use my eraser to erase the parts I don't want to have. And this also has a size. But keep in mind in that case that the eraser size is also the brush size. Now it would be a good update to make them independent because now when I start drawing again, immediately I have this very big brush. Now another thing here is when you want to go a step back, you can use control set on your keyboard just to take back your last stroke and you can also get back multiple steps. So let's go and draw a little scene and then write a prompt for that. Now I'm going to write my prompt in here and here on the right side you have a pop down menu. You have a lot of different styles in here that you can choose. You can see that they are very different. For example, you have manga style, interior views, surreal style, watercolor and so on. Cyberpunk, there's a lot of different things here. All right, so here we have the result from what I've drawn before. You can see we have my fortress here with the entrance, with the two towers. And here we have the mountain landscape looks pretty amazing. The good thing here is also when I go down here to that field, I can still see my drawing. So I can see how well this is sticking to what I have actually painted originally. Another thing you can also do here is to click down here on remix. This is remixing what you already have. So for example, you can now type here, you want to have the same scene, but you want to have it at night time. So here we have the result. Now it's night time. I love the lighting situation. I love this dramatic sky. So this is what Skybox or Blockade Labs is really good at creating these 360 environments. You can also download them. And if you have a headset or if you have one of these headset attachments for your smartphone, which you can buy really cheap on Amazon. This is really a cool experience. And then stand in that environment and see it in full size. Like you're actually looking up to a really big full size building that is really amazing. And if you know a little bit about 3D environments or how to use Unity 3D or Unreal Engine, you can actually use that as a background in video games. So you can potentially use this to create your own 3D worlds.
Also, I have a super cool extension for you. It is for Automatic 1111, probably also for Vlad Diffusion. It's called After Detailer. Thank you very much for my community to suggesting this to me. Now, what this extension is for is that it tracks the face, hands and body of characters in your image, one or even multiple characters, which is really amazing. And then it inpaints these parts with the prompt or even the Laura that you give it. The Laura is actually a lot more useful and it also does it in a higher resolution, even in a smaller image. So that additionally can be very useful. Now here I have an interesting example for you. Let's say you are a huge fan of Jenna Ortega and want to do some fan art because who isn't a fan? fan of this very talented actress. But the library, the model of Stable Diffusion is trained on older images. And you might not know this, but Jenna Ortega was a star from a very young age on. So when you enter her name in the normal Stable Diffusion, you always get the small version, but you don't want to have that because you're a fan of the Adam's family grown up Jenna Ortega. So what you can do here is that you write your prompt normally without the Laura in there. So this is rendering an image of a grown up woman with, for example, here, Victorian dressing on a graveyard. So we have this Adam's family kind of feel. And then afterwards, with after detailer, you track the face, you enter the Laura, and now this is rendered onto that body, just the face. So that means this is replacing it automatically, even in the text to image version. So here is how to install and use that. First of all, you're going to go to the GitHub page. The link is provided below my video. Now, I would suggest to you that you check out the page. There's a lot of interesting information in here on how to use that and also shows you the face tracking and the body tracking. So that is pretty good information to get started. Then to install that, you want to copy up here the address of the GitHub page, go over to Automatic 1111 to the Extensions tab and to the Install from URL tab. Then you copy the address in here and click on Install. Wait a couple of seconds until it is finished. You will have a small text down here telling you that it is finished. And after that, of course, you're going to go to the Installed tab. And as always, you click first on Check for Updates and then you click on Apply and Restart UI. Now, personally, and also the GitHub page, I would suggest to you to completely close down Automatic 1111 by clicking here and closing the command window and starting Automatic 1111 again. After you've done this, in your text to image tab and also in the image to image tab, you will find that when you scroll down, you have here a new area for after detailer. If it's closed, it looks like this. When you click on that, it's opening up. It looks like this. And you can see here you have two instances of that. You can use both of them at the same time for different purposes, for example, to track the face and then also separately track the hands. Up here, you have a checkbox to enable the A detailer. And below that, you have here a chooser for different models. Now, there is two YOLO face models. I would highly suggest to start with them to learn how to use that extension. Below that, you have media pipe face models. These also track the face expression. It can be very useful. Then you have a hand model and two person models. Below that, here you have a positive prompt and a negative prompt. I would highly suggest to copy the complete negative prompt from your image also down here. For the positive prompt, you might only want to use the face or hand description you want to have in here, plus the Laura you want to apply. Below that, you have different fields for detection, mask processing, and in painting. Most of them are mostly for advanced users. But one thing is interesting here, if you have an image with people in the background, so there's multiple faces in the same image, you have here a mask minimum area ratio. This doesn't really give you a preview of what that means. But the good thing here is when you set this higher, you can rule out the smaller faces in the background. So only the face of your main character is going to be replaced and not all of the faces at the same time, because you can actually use this after detailer extension to track all the faces in the image. 
That, for example, can be used without Allura to render all of these faces in a higher resolution. Also down here, you have a choice for control net model. Now, personally, even after extensive testing, I could not really find out what the purpose for that is. If you know that, let me know in the comments what this actually does, because the face tracking is already done up here, so I'm not quite sure. Now the way to use that is very simple. Up here you write your normal text prompt without the LoRa and without naming the person that you want to render and of course your negative prompt so that you have an image that is untouched, uninfluenced of the LoRa that you want to apply later on. Then down here you write the positive prompt and the negative prompt for what you want to apply afterwards. And the way how this is now working is that when you click on generate, it is first rendering the image based on your normal prompt and then afterwards tracking the face, the hand or the body, depending on the model you have chosen, and will replace that image by inpainting it into your image here. Let's have a look at some interesting stuff in Photoshop. And first of all, here on the left side, we have this object selection tool. Now that's not specifically new, but I want to show you. You can see I go with my mouse over the image, it selects the sky, it selects the mountains, it selects the grass, although this seems to take also a little bit of the mountains, then the person and the head separately. That is pretty interesting. So you can click on that and then is that automatically creating a selection for you. Now another thing here is that you can just draw a box with this tool over the person and this is going to select the person for you, of course, in that case, with the head. Now down here, you can see we have a new smart menu. That's actually a new thing. And here you can see I have a select subject button. So when I click on the select subject button, this is thinking a little bit and then it is selecting for me the woman, including the head. That is pretty amazing. You can see I also have here a remove background button. Let's click on that and it takes a little bit and it removes all of the background. Now that is not 100% perfect. Like you can see down here, it didn't completely remove the background here, but overall it's a pretty fast and easy tool to use. But I wanna show you another thing that is cool and that is the content aware fill. So on the left side here, we have here this tool for spot healing, spot healing brush tool. That's supposed to be better now. So let's click on that. And as you can see, we have three different backgrounds here. We have the sky, we have the mountains, we have the grass. So let's see if this can remove all of that in one go and that we have a picture without that person in it. Let's see takes a little bit. Oh, <laughs> that works surprisingly well. Oh my God. So, well, okay, okay. When we zoom in here, you can see, ah, there's a little bit of mistakes here, a little bit of mistakes there, but I guess when we paint over that year, it takes some new mountain tops here. Let's go here, yeah, I think you can, kind of, yeah, you can kind of fix that pretty easily. That is also pretty amazing. Another cool thing I want to show you here is, first of all, once again, we are using here the object selection tool. And when I go here over the individual people, you can see that it selects every person individually. And with this person specifically, you can see that it even understands that this hand is part of that person. But more importantly, when you go up here to filter, you have here your camera raw filter. Click on that. And when this is opened up on the right side, you see a selection tool. Now, once you click on that, wait for a little while, and you will see here that this will create a selection for each of these people and you can create a mask and adjustments for each of these people separately. Now here's another amazing thing. Once you click on that person, this gives you a detailed list of their features. For example, here you can make a selection of only the facial skin. Here is the body skin. Here we have only the eyebrows, only the iris and pupil, only the lips, only the teeth, and then also only the clothing. This is also very, very useful for adjusting, for improving your AI created images. Another interesting function that you now find in the Photoshop beta is generative AI. So you can generate images that fit into the image you're editing. Go to your Creative Cloud desktop app and you want to go down here to the beta apps and there you have the Photoshop beta. You need to install that there. 
Now the way this works is you make a selection, for example, with the lasso selection tool. Let's go up here, select a part, and then here it says generate a fill. Click on this. This will give you a box where you can enter, of course, a prompt. So let's say here we want to have a hot air balloon. You click on generate and you can see here from my resources that this is not using my GPU. So apparently this is working through the API on their own cloud servers. When the rendering is done, you can see that you get three suggestions here for hot air balloons. They do fit the style, so they are actually photorealistic. And at least for the first one, I would say that also the lighting is okay. The lights are coming from the right side. It fits the overcast sky. On the right side here, you can also see the three different selections for you. And when you look at the layer tab down here, you can see that this has created a mask. And from that mask, you would almost suspect Expect that you can move this around on the background but actually when you do that you can see that the mask generated is actually just a very rough mask around that which is surprising but when you delete the mask on your layer you can still go to the object selection tool and then click on your hot air balloon and from that create a new mask. So now you actually have the desired effect that you can put your hot air balloon anywhere you want. And of course, with control T to translate, you can also resize your hot air balloon. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of these news. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.